Are you in the marketing services industry or are you interested in content production or video creation? Well, this is the episode to watch because I have with me someone who's visiting from Dubai. She is the founder of Mint Mina and she is an expert on creating and producing content with value. Check out this episode with Dolly Saidi and learn about how to create content effectively, whether it's for yourself or for the brand that you represent. Dolly Saidi, how are you today? Good. Thank you for uh, having me and thank you for waiting for me. Thank you. We had a long day. Yes, I was going to say, you're not tired. We've had a very long day. We've been yeah. at a conference since what, 9 a.m., 8 a.m.? Since 8 and yeah. yesterday as well. And yesterday as yeah. well. And now you're done. And this yes. is your first time to Pakistan? No. I've been here before. Oh, you have? You know, we, we, as Mint, we consult for Coca-Cola, okay. amongst others. Right. But with Coke, we produce a lot in Karachi and Lahore. Right. So I've been here before many times. And what is the one takeaway you get every time you visit? There's a long way to go. <laughs> There's a long way to go. And that's why we need good consultants like you to come help us out. Yeah. But, uh, but you have great talent. Yeah. Uh, what is it about our talent that's unique compared to, let's say, some of the other markets you play in? So I can give you um, just one hint. Yeah. Um, they compete creatively with global agencies. They could win a brief. Really? When there's a pitch. Yes. You have neat creative minds. Uh, and you have mostly the new generation. Yeah. A lot of eagerness. Yeah. To learn, to explore, to get to. They have the curiosity. Yeah. To know what's happening elsewhere. Because really... It's by being, by having curiosity that you get to learn what's happening in the world and Correct. apply it at your end or take from it what's important or what's needed for right. you and apply it. So if you feel that this talent is such strong talent, why is it that we're unable to break out of our local market sort of dynamic of just copy pasting stuff, right? And not letting the talent shine with their creative ability. What, where do you see that that restriction? I think that first you have to get over the fact that you need to copy. Another thing you need to understand that you don't really need to stay stuck in the local cultural nuance that you keep on. Everything needs to have that heavy, old-fashioned cultural uh, cues. I definitely think you can go, uh, you can um, deploy, as you said today in the mm. conference, you can deploy the talent and you should be able to work with uh, international clients, but you definitely need to learn a lot as well from them. Right. When I work with uh, local agencies to cater non-Pakistani uh, advertisers or advertisers that are not based in Pakistan, I feel that on the creative front, super strong, especially when it's for the Pakistan, for, for other markets, but as well for Pakistan, I feel that they nail it really. But uh, the account management, the production capabilities, this is where you fall short. And why do you think that is? Is it the discipline that's missing? Or it's the training? It's not only, it's the exposure as well. Right. There's no exposure. Okay. Uh, you have a lot of limitations. So give me some you examples. You have small budgets. So, so first of all, the budgets are small. The budgets small. are small. And uh, most clients are willing to invest when you shoot abroad, but they're not willing to invest when you're shooting here. Uh, why, why do you think that is? I don't know. I feel that they feel their investment is safer if it's abroad. When it's abroad. Here they feel that it might lead to... Here they feel it's a miss or mm. a hit or miss. So it's know? a trust deficit then, right? In a sense, because... But if, it's, not, um, um, it's not a mean one. It's not out of lack of trust as much as lack of confidence in the exposure and the experience and the know-how. So it's more about the lack of the experience and the knowledge. It's not an ethical mistrust or right. doubts. It's just they it's, don't know. It's, yeah. They don't know if you know, basically. Right, okay. And so if you look at budgets, let's say, for advertising, for the kind of production work that you do in the Middle East, where do you think those average 
on an average, where do they fall compared to what, let's say, is a budget here versus even India? Like, let's say it's, if it's a dollar in the Middle East. Budgets in India are bigger than budgets here. Right. You know, what, what makes me wonder is you have budgets. I mean, advertisers here have budgets when they want to. So suddenly, uh, it's not nice what I'm going to say, so don't use it. But you should still say it. <laughs> so um, s- there are budgets for celebrities and yes, influencers correct. and big music producers. Absolutely right. Uh, but there is no budget to invest in what's going to show on screen, like upgrade equipment, upgrade our department. Everybody needs to work for this to happen. For you to get to um, to upgrade production, which I think definitely everybody needs, they have a social responsibility, as I said before, they have a responsibility towards the industry, yeah. all the advertisers, to work with the local uh, teams and the local production companies and the local talent, because this is how you can upgrade it. Yeah. This is how you can upgrade the production. Like- if you keep on... on, on uh, Going abroad when you have a bit of money and then when you don't have money, you do it here. Of course, you're going to have mediocre results or average results. So the interesting thing is that up until a couple of years ago, I don't know if it's still true now, when I was involved in production, all good quality films had to be sent overseas for color correction. And for the longest time, I would ask, why can't we build that talent in-house? If it's a, if it's a technical issue, if it's a training issue, if it's an infrastructure issue, why not make that investment? And no one did? I'll tell you, um, when it comes to grading, a colorist is an artist. So it takes more than having the machines. You need to have... The right talent. The right talent. Uh, Today in the breakout session, I showed them the magic of grading. Right. And what you can do as a colorist when when you grade, how you can uplift a copy. Right. It's as important as music. Uh, as important as acting, but unfortunately, right. nobody gives it uh, its fair. It, that's true. <laughs> everyone nobody invests. says, what a great grading for a copy. So everyone will invest in the actor or the face. No one's going to think about the music, the sound, the grading, even the equipment, the lighting. Mostly nobody cares or nobody mentions or gives credits to grading. Because I don't Some think they could, know. Th- that's the thing. Grading is super important. I do uh, definitely eventually. And I gave the example, I think yesterday of, um, when, when the markets like uh, now mature, but previously immature markets like Lebanon, Egypt, UAE, Saudi was now picking up. Right. Um, initially they did not have good colorists. Yeah. And then how did they develop that talent? Because they used to either sometimes bring someone on board for a month. And, and, and that would make the difference for of, the local team? Yes, because they would, first of all, when you bring one. But this requires investment, you yes. know, when a production company that has post-production facilities or a post-production company declares to everyone that, hey, we're bringing this senior colorist who used to work at the mill yeah. in London, for instance. Or uh, we're getting somebody who worked in Rhino in Argentina, talking about big companies, big post-production. We're borrowing that talent for a month. He's going to be seated here in Karachi. You would at least have four or five films done with him. I know that he's not your solution, but the assistant colorist sitting next to him for a month, he's going to learn something. Mm. And this is how... Markets like Cairo, Beirut, and Dubai managed to upgrade their talent. They used to get the best directors, and local directors would learn from them. They would work with them as assistant directors. They would not have the big ego to say, I'm a director, I don't work with this foreign director. Same for DOPs, same for colorists. They used to bring colorists to stay in post-production companies for a month or two. And the local colorist or the assistant colorist would sit and learn and observe. You need to observe to learn. So you borrow international or foreign Mm. talent. 
the right people who are eager to learn. Because if you don't want to learn, you will never be able to upgrade yourself. That's true. But there are people who are willing to learn. Uh, same for photographers. What about like at, at universities or academic institutions? You're talking more about on the job training. Mm. Do you feel that this kind of training needs to start at the academic level? Or is it okay to not have been through that academic experience and start as just as a cameraman or a, an editor without having that educational background? So I'll, I'll tell you a, a funny story. Uh, I'm an economics graduate. I did not study audiovisual. Okay. Or art. I was not in a communication school. Uh, and I was a nerd. Uh, but for some reason, I moved. I found myself in production. Right. Um, what brought you here from economics? Um, it's funny because I had one of my summer friends telling me, we have a series that we produce for mm. a leading TV station in Beirut. And um, they're looking for a production manager for the mm. summer. Like, my production manager, what yeah. are you talking about? She's like, I think you do a great job. Right. She, was, she was an assistant director. Okay. And it was an innocent summer job. That has turned into And a then career. they told me, you're so good at it. Yeah. Like, I used to manage the schedule of the big celebrities who are in that series. Right. And they used to be scared of me. Like she said, we have to be there at seven. We need to be there at seven. She said the call sheet is, and I, and I grew into it. And then yeah. I moved to NBC, which is a huge, yeah. uh, I contributed in the launch of Arabia Channel, NBC oh, wow. One, NBC Two, the move to the UAE right. from London. And then I headed, uh, I were, I moved to the agency and I headed the um, IPG, uh, the, the production department of IPG across all their, uh, agencies. Right. So it was FP7, Momentum, like McCann, Momentum, Commonwealth, Low, uh, Mullen Low now. Right. Um, so, you know, there's no rule, basically. So you, it could, could, you could have the educational background, you couldn't have you the You could have the educational background and don't do a good job yeah. when you, when it becomes your job. Or you could just not have And, and you know better, you know, yeah. like, you, you know that <laughs> firsthand. I mean, I'm that, a finance guy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so... But the answer is not no, not necessarily. Of course, you need to start yeah. at university. You know, like I'll give you a small, um, another example. We are here these two days for the summit, right. for, for the advertising summit. It would have been nice for um, communication schools or in your area to, to grab this opportunity yes. and get someone like David yeah. to go give an hour mm -hmm. um, talk. In, in a talk in a university. Or even that talk he had, it was like... Or, or maybe um, give back, you know, as, yeah. as Mark was saying, you need to give to yes. take. This also applies in giving to the talent for you to take right. back from them. So maybe these sessions, you could suggest, maybe these sessions can go edited to universities in Pakistan. Actually, that's a great idea. We can actually suggest to the society that they edit the sessions and actually moderate them as a part of like course, a, not as a discussion. Yes, you know? of course. Because this is really good. Yeah. Um, it's more tangible than all these theories they yeah. learn in universities. And then maybe you can, um, together as, as a, a united force, get these people when you have shoots from universities to come and attend these shoots. So early on, they would be integrated into the process. So it's, it sounds like what you're saying is investing in people of is the one thing that we're lacking. Of course. We're, we're investing in the talent. We're more, more likely to invest in uh, a big name celebrity. We're likely to invest in uh, international travel, but we are not investing in our own people who are going to carry this forward. You need to invest in people and you need to invest in production capabilities. And production capabilities, of course. Yeah. The actual hard investment. The so, grading equipment, the 100%. light, sound, but cameras. But it's not as bad as you think. I think we've gotten... here yeah. and I think there are very few things you don't have. For, I think equipment-wise, we're not bad. I think yeah. we're reasonable. Um, few, few things that need upgrade. Yeah. Makes but sense. you're not far off. So yeah. um, many countries, uh, so for instance, big, big, big studios. Yeah. Even 
in uh, Cairo and you have big studios, but you don't have the studios like the ones you find in Eastern Europe. Oh yeah, those or are or in Italy. Of course, those are uh, completely different. Yeah, so interesting. So now the other thing I wanted to talk to you about um, is you had these. 12 points, right? Yeah. So simple. I mean, it was like watching it, it was like, I know all of this. But at the same time, I was like, we've made all of those mistakes, all 12 of them. So of those 12, I know it's a long list. Give me your five favorite ones, right? The five that you're just like, get these five right and you're 80% there. Yeah. The, you know, applying the 80-20 rule. Yeah. Of course, the first one I wanted yesterday. Yeah. Like oh, the I wanted yesterday. Yeah. So I have I have a hypothesis on that. We used to discuss here a lot. Speed, quality, and... Uh, That's the production and, triangle. And price. Yeah. It's, right? it's called the production the triangle. The production triangle. Pick two. Speed, quality, price. Is that true? Yeah. It's true. It's no. What's true is... If you want to do something in the production triangle, you have time, quality, cost. That's right. why it's a triangle. Right, right, right. If you want to do something of very high quality, which is this one, you need to give it the time yes. and the cost yes. it needs. Yes. If you want to do something very quickly, yes. you need to double up effort and money to yeah. get good quality. Otherwise, your quality will be sacrificed. So when you say, I want it yesterday, why does that bother you? Because when you want it yesterday, you're going to either pay double. Okay. If you want it yesterday, it means they need to gather everybody very quickly to get things done and people will ask for more money. Absolutely. Uh, instead of having one editor, you're going to have two. Instead of the music composer working alone, he's going to bring three people. Instead of everything will be, you're going to inflate your cost. Yeah. And money does not buy time. Yeah, there's no it substance. It buys it to a certain extent. Right. But you reach a point where it can no longer buy. And this is where you start losing on quality. And in most cases that I have witnessed, most of them, you end up paying more, you compromise on quality because you don't have the time to craft your copy or yeah. your content, and you never make it on time. Because advertisers, they will look and say, it's not well done yet. Yeah. And then they're going to start to try to buy time. Yeah. They would have, it would have been nice to just give more time from the beginning. But I don't entirely blame advertisers. Advertisers need to learn how to say yes, and agencies need to learn how to start saying no. That's the hardest skill at an agency. Yeah. It's but, like, it's but, like but you love dessert. Advertisers need to know how to say, you need to learn how to say yes for their own sake. Correct, that's true. So... Uh, when, when advertisers say, uh, no all the time and, and agencies say yes all the time, this is the recipe for disaster. Maybe they should train each other. <laughs> uh, the maybe yes they the should no. trust each other. <laughs> and maybe they should trust each other. Yeah. So that's number one is I wanted yesterday. Yeah. What's, what's number two for you? Uh, why is my product looking like this? I loved that one. Yeah. When you when you said that, it reminded me of a commercial I shot from my other company. And we did everything. And I'll, in fact, send you, I'll just give you a, a gift box of that. Thank you. We never thought about, I didn't. Yeah. And it was my fault. Maybe I should have. But I was trusting the production company to do that. Yeah. And on screen, the product did not look right. Yeah. What's the solution for that? It's a science. Product is not something, some products look good generally, like Naturally, they look good. But even the best of products, I mean, look at this bottle of water. Right. It, it's nice. Mm. But when you are shooting it in close-up, you start saying, mm, wait a minute, I'm seeing too much of these details of the nutrition. It doesn't look right on screen. Mm. And I see that separation, which mm. is not cutting properly. It's cutting underneath. And when you amplify, you start seeing mm. all these things that you don't want to see. And then you start... 0 0.33, why do I want to show that this is the small bottle? I want it to be applicable to all my right. sizes. And then, oh, 
the water inside is not looking as clear because it's frosty. All these things start. So you need to have guidelines or directions um, or for for your product. Right. And this takes time. It's not something you do on set. Right. It's not something you do at PPM. This is the difference between a good agency and a bad agency, a good production company and a bad production company, a good product ha handler and a bad one. Right. Good agencies would remind the client if the client forgot that he needs to dedicate time for discussing and agreeing on the product and pre-testing. Yeah. Good production companies, if client and agency missed out on it, they need to highlight to yeah. both that, hey, guys, what are the requests? Sometimes silly small questions trigger yeah. for you things that you need to think of. Makes sense. We're humans. You could miss it. The client can miss it. I mean, yeah. we, you shouldn't miss But you could miss it. If it's a good production company, they would highlight it for you. Right. And if it's not them, the director should, because he's going to shoot that right. thing. He, need, he would raise these questions. And if it's not him, it's the product handler you are commissioning for the job. Interesting. So a product, it's uh, and it doesn't stop at how it's looking. It's like how many bottles mm. or packs they're going to give you, what flavors. It's, it's a list of questions mm. that once you answer them, you are covered. And the same thing applies for anyone creating any type of content, right? For an influencer, it's about the way the of influencer course. looks on camera as they're He's presenting the something. Because they're the product, yeah. right? You know, of so course. they have to articulate themselves. Interesting. The image of the image an that influencer they exactly want to curate. is actually the product he's exactly. selling. Exactly. What what is the third one for you? I mean, I love all of them. Like the Let's shoot this abroad, but we yeah, we covered discussed, it. Yeah, we discussed we covered that. It I think that makes sense, though. I'm, I'm never personally in favor of that. I always say, listen, what you can achieve, if you want to serve the local market, what you can achieve in a local shoot in terms of authenticity can never be curated. Like you said, it's True. a lot of money will be spent on it. Why do you want to spend Take it? Take the travel cost, invest it here. In your people. And, and in your people and, and in, the, the, in what the requirements of the shoot are, yeah. and you will be uh, safe. But to be fair, there are some cases where you cannot shoot here. Yeah. I was doing for Danone, Morocco. And I always shoot for Danone in Morocco because I believe in local production. Right. But specifically, it was a tabletop shoot. It was phantom, bolt, melting chocolate, splashing milk, yeah. 2,000 frames per second, uh, rigs of... Uh, balls that turn yeah. of mixers. It was impossible to shoot it in Morocco. They don't have the capabilities. They don't have the infrastructure for it. So we did it in Italy. But the team that traveled, registered, recorded, took notes, took pictures of everything we've done. The spooning on the tabletop and on screen so that they could go back to their teams and teach them the process of how did we get to this tabletop. What I want to say is whenever you can, whenever it's not justifiable, you should shoot locally. Makes sense. But that's a good example of where you need to go abroad. Sometimes you do. Yeah. Um, and then another one would be... So that's number four now. Yeah. No, that, that don't uh, you want to you want to count this? I like this one because yeah. you see, you gave an example. Typically, so most people would not think about the equipment. The, the example you just gave, yeah. All I was thinking of, it's a room. Why does that room have to be in another no. country? And then suddenly you realize it's because that other country has the infrastructure, of course, has all the technology. In case something breaks, something happens, you've got the technicians, and you've got a bench strength of people who are trained in this. So if you don't get one, you get a second, you get a third. You're no, not stuck. And, and the level of the home economist working yes. on, so you see a spoon, but in reality, they mix so many things yeah. to put them in the right and how to spoon it. Yeah. It's, a, it's a science. It's, it's a, a science, absolutely. It's a, you need a lot of expertise to do it. Absolutely. Uh, and in studios like these, it's not one studio. They would be shooting simultaneously, right. three, four 
scenes. So you have three, four tabletop in a huge studio. Right. Things are being recorded in parallel. This is how you get library shots of beauty, of uh, beauty shots. Um, another one can be um, the story is not coming across like they would see the offline and they feel that I don't understand. It's not clear. The story is not clear. That's because, as I said in the session, they get overexcited that they're getting a longer version and they forget mm, I like the essentials, point. which is your main copy, yeah. the one you're putting all your money behind in media. Yeah. Your 30 uh, seconder. Not, no one cares yeah. about the 90 seconder. And I was even telling the teams today who attended the workshop on the processes and best practices, don't get fooled by a director's reel that has exactly what you want. Right. But all the reel is filled with ads that are a minute and a minute and a half. Right. Because this needs to worry you. It means this director is only showing you what you want to see. His director's cuts, which has the full story. Is this director capable of telling me a story in 30 seconds yeah. and in 45 seconds? Yeah. And like this starts one. at real. You need to, this should be an alarm at real, not even at shooting board. So right. before commissioning him, you should ask the right questions. Right. Do you have versions of these copies that are shorter? Yeah. He needs to tell you the story because right. at the end of the day, when you're selling whatever, you're telling a story. Yeah. Most of the times you're telling a story. This story needs to come across. So you That's need true. to ensure that. And then you need to ensure that you ask the right questions at shooting board. Don't get carried away with a long version or, right. or all these nice, nice, good to have additional frames that yeah. they draw for you. And the nice descriptions. Where does it take you for your main copy? Makes sense. Will it take you there? Makes sense. Um, so that's one. And and your fifth one and the final one, your favorite. I think let's do it in post. <laughs> that's a funny one. That's a funny one. Can that we is, do it in post? Can we do it in post? And it's just like... And where does that normally, where does that question usually come from? The brand side or the agency side? So this is, everybody is at fault. Usually when it starts piling up, because if it's one thing that you're going to fix in post school, but a week preparation. So the pre-production meeting was not conducted correctly and detailed and enough. And everything was missed. And everything was missed. And everyone missed it. And everyone missed it. Because if not everyone missed it, somebody would have brought it up and they would have solved it. So if you ask that question, everyone's missed it. Isn't there a checklist you can keep that you... Of course, there is. If everyone missed it, this is where you are in deep trouble. Yeah. And this is why I'm saying it's everyone's fault. Because sometimes it would be a miss from the client and on set he tells you, I don't like it. And this is when the production company wants to save the day, in a sense, save themselves because uh, they want to finish their shoot. Right. And this is where we start promising, yeah. I'll do it in yeah. post. And this is where it's, things go wrong. So once in a blue moon to do things in post, because there's a miss, it's fine. But it should not be the solution for all the missed details yeah. that nobody noticed. Um, and it's a shame because when you, when the advertiser is paying money for post-production, uh, they would actually be instead of paying it to craft their copy, right. paying it to clean the mess that That's true. nobody noticed. That's true. Yeah. These are great. Um, I, I, they're so simple. Yeah. That's what I loved about them is it's like when you hear them, you're like, oh, that's absolutely true. Yeah. It's, it's, no, it's, a, it's no, you know, it's not no brainer. But I really appreciate you taking the time out to come here. Thank I know you. we had to jiggle, uh, jiggle around schedules and everything. No, th thank you for But I'm glad me. we were able to document this and capture it. And I look forward to seeing you again here and maybe even teaching some of the people yes, some of the I, skills. I, I would love to. And I just want to say that uh, thank you first. And I'm sorry I kept you late. Um, I just want to say that I've done many mistakes. I've been doing mistakes for the past 25 years. 
the most important thing is to learn from mistakes and take them as learning opportunities absolutely uh, for ourselves and for others absolutely and um, I would love to participate in any any session where I can contribute or share my learnings for other people not to make mistakes or to make less mistakes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you all for tuning in to Digital. Stay tuned for more. Like, subscribe, comment below. I always take your feedback when we're finding guests and we will keep doing that for you and finding great content. Bye-bye. <laughs>